Most people will assume that their concussion is going to get better in a week or two. But a rather large study in 2022 on brain injury recovery found that even six months out, over half of the patients still hadn't fully recovered functionally. This wasn't from severe trauma. These were individuals with what's called mild traumatic brain injury or what most people will call a concussion. So I'm Dr. Mark Heisig. A huge part of my practice is helping people recover from concussion and persistent concussion symptoms, or PCS. So let's look at the TRAC TBI study. It was published in the JAMA Network. It's an open trial. You can go ahead and look at this. Researchers followed 991 people with uncomplicated TBI, which means that uncomplicated means they had normal CT scans. There was no bleeds. There was no finding on imaging. Their Glasgow coma score was a 15, which basically means without going too in the weeds on a Glasgow coma score, it's just how alert and oriented are you to how much of a coma are you trending towards? And these people were fully alert and oriented, normal CT scans, no intracranial bleeds. And so this is what most of the public would call a mild concussion. The reality is there's no such thing as a mild concussion or severe concussion. There's just concussion. I think the term gets confused because we call it a mild traumatic brain injury. MTBI is concussion. And here's what they found. At two weeks, 73% of people had not recovered yet. And when we say not recovered, we mean not fully integrated back into work, into school, into sport, into life. There were still significant impediments into their daily activities and quality of life. At six months when we followed up, 56% of people still had not fully recovered. And again, that's at six months, not fully returned to work, to school, to sport, to life. Your impediments in daily activities might include sex, the ability to go to a restaurant, the ability to do normal daily things was wildly impaired. That's a massive hit to your life. To kind of drive this home, among those who haven't fully recovered, nearly nine out of 10 of these people reported they still hadn't returned to their pre-injury daily life. So all the stuff I just rambled about, nine out of 10 of those people say that that was happening to them. So if that surprises you, and or hits close to home, you're not alone. So why do symptoms linger even if imaging is clean? Because a concussion, again, clinically defined as a mild traumatic brain injury, is a functional disruption of the brain, not a structural one. It affects how your brain and your body, like your whole neurobiology, regulate across several key systems. So we've got the autonomic and like blood flow system, we've got vestibular and ocular systems, we've got cognitive and emotional regulation, we've got sleep and hormonal signaling, we've also got the neck and proprioception. So if we were to go autonomic and cerebral blood flow regulation. Together, we're talking about heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, oxygen delivery to the brain. When this system is disrupted, we get brain fog, fatigue, exercise intolerance, anxiety, things like that. When our vestibular and ocular systems, so our eye and ears are off, this is what's helping us to normally maintain balance, orientation, visual stability. So if you don't have balance and orientation and visual stability, you might have blurry or double vision, feelings of imbalance, feelings of disorientation, feelings of brain fog. Then we get into cognitive and emotional regulation. This is going to be things like your memory, your processing speed, your mood, your frustration tolerance and your irritability. So the ability to track a conversation at a table where multiple people are speaking or your ability to remember what was just said when that person started speaking. This cognitive and emotional piece is really, really big. And then we've got the factor that compounds everything we just talked about and that's your sleep and your hormones. So these are commonly affected after head trauma. We're getting more and more data about the hormonal side of things. So that's starting to get more cleared up, but we just know from daily life that a bad night of sleep doesn't help anything even when you're not concussed, let alone when you're recovering from concussion. And just to really bring this home, the ACRM's 2023 criteria of concussion and mild traumatic brain injury, they confirm when imaging is normal or not clinically indicated, the term concussion may be used interchangeably with mild traumatic brain injury. Just because your brain is clean on CT, clean on CT, no bleeds, no bad imaging finding, doesn't mean that your brain function has returned to normal because we don't see a concussion. We don't see mild traumatic brain injury on imaging. What we will see is measurable physiological or symptom changes on functional testing like the vestibular ocular motor screening, like the buffalo concussion treadmill test, and like different neurocognitive screenings, the, the Dana or the impact. And they often don't fully resolve in everyone without rehab. Let's take one very common example of exercise intolerance. So after a concussion, many, many people experience symptom flares with physical activity. 
even light activity. This is not just being out of shape. And oftentimes it's not out of shape when you, you were an athlete before the injury. Like, why would I be out of shape now? It's actually just usually due to dysregulated blood flow, that autonomic regulation we talked about earlier. This is your brain's ability to match oxygen supply with demand during exercise, during physical activity. And after concussion, this sort of breaks down. And so when your demand starts to exceed what the system can supply, it breaks down and symptoms start to appear. So we can actually test for this using graded submaximal exercise protocols, and we can treat it using sub-symptom threshold aerobic exercise. And that's shown to be the drug of choice in concussion. It dramatically improves outcomes compared to stretching, control, and just rest. All right, so if it's been more than a few weeks and you're still not back to baseline, it's not unusual. It's actually statistically normal based on this data if nothing has been kind of implemented as a rehab plan, but it doesn't mean that it's right. And it doesn't mean that you're stuck either. There are testable, reversible reasons why recovery stalls or never even got started. And there's clear strategies that we can use to sort of reset and reintegrate those systems. That's exactly what I do in my practice. So if you're interested in working with me, you can go ahead and click the link, book a consult. I work virtually and in person with folks. And we'll assess what's happening beneath the surface, create a plan that meets you where you are. A normal scan doesn't mean normal function. And even though treatment takes time, it doesn't mean that time is the treatment. So if you learned anything from this video, if you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the bell, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. It's free for you. It helps me. I'm super appreciative. Until next time, I'm Dr. Mark.